So the idea behind this presentation is it's going to be interactive. We're going to work in this document, okay, because we're going to have a couple of activities that we're going to do together. Um, and then at the end, if you want to make a copy of this, because there's some resources in here or whatever, go right ahead. Okay. You just make a copy at the top file, make a copy and it, and it's yours. Okay. You don't have to, if you don't want to, it's just an interactive way for us to, to work. So, okay, guys, let's get started. So slide number three. So this presentation is all about sharing your trade vision. And so we're really going to talk a little bit more about, we'll talk a little bit about, um, uh the pedagogical side because that does since we are trade teachers that does come in but we're really going to talk more about keeping up with the trade like nancy said keeping up with these these trends and these factors that are influencing the trade so that's what this presentation today is going to be about all right slide number four so the presentation there's kind of two elements to it there is the the the, the me talking <laughs> so there then this is what we're going to talk about is staying current uh, like how do you stay current in the trade we're going to talk about reinvesting this new knowledge that i get about what's going on in this trade world how do i reinvest that into education and we're going to talk a little bit about upskilling support systems in the trade as well as what's inside education and so in education we have these systems the send and the lvex system and then we have the vt.proceed.ca now the interaction part this, like I said, we're a small group, and I see Genevieve has joined us, so welcome, Genevieve. We're a small group. Go ahead and discuss. We're going, we are going to have opportunities that we're going to, we might want to jot down about, oh, that's an interesting idea that I might want to explore for trade upskilling and the funding aspect. And we're also going to reach out to our network on vt.proceed.ca, okay? And if we go to slide five, there's three parts to this session. The first part, we're going to talk a little bit about the factors influencing trade skills today. The second part, we're going to explore a little bit the, 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 the support systems. And the third part, we're going to connect with our, with our people on vt.proceed.ca. Okay. Slide number six. So the presentation is about an hour long and it is participatory. So please participate, unmute yourself, talk. We're not a big group, so that's fine. Um, like I said, you have edit access to this slide. So go ahead and do whatever you want to it. That's fine. And slide number seven, whenever you see this little <coughs> symbol on a slide, this little, these little people talking, that's an interactive slide. We're actually going to work straight into the slide. Okay. So that's something that we're going to develop together that at the end, we'll have a nice little takeaway for ourselves. Okay. Uh, the slide number eight, these are the two resource slides. So when we talk about the funding and stuff, there's the forms that go with it. You can go get that from proceed.ca. So that's the link out to proceed. And then there's also the vt.proceed.ca, which is the social networking site for all the trade teachers across the province. And that one we're actually going to go into today. Okay. Um, and as far as the session is concerned, yeah, unmute yourself to talk because we're a small group. If you have any tech difficulties, you can ask Mona or log out and just log back in. Mark will just push you into this break room. And the resources for this are located straight in the slides. Okay. So slide number 10, today's goals. We want to try and recognize the importance of trade upskilling, but recognize it because we want to reinvest it into uh, into our, our, our trade teaching, into vocational training, okay? And we want to start sharing our vision on vt.proceed.ca because we want to get other people talking about this as well because the information that circulates be, uh, amongst us is also part of trade upskilling. Okay, so before we start the actual presentation, slide 11, do we have any questions or comments? Nope. I, like I said, we're a small group, go ahead and ask away. All right, let's get started. Let's skip down to slide number 14. Okay, and slide number 14, the first thing, this is like a question. I want you to think about, well, how is teaching a trade similar and how is it different from teaching like academic subjects and if you go to slide number 15 you'll see there's a few boxes there and we have our little bonums in the corner which means we're going to work on this slide go ahead and choose a box and write down what you think in your opinion there's no wrong answer to this these are opinions <laughs> what you think is similar or what you think is different Okay, so anybody want to mention anything? Do anybody have anything they want to say about some of the stuff that they put in there as far as what's the same and what's different? 
Well, I just wanted to mention for, for me, what, one of the things that I put was the, the different, the career focus part, where mm -hmm. I feel like with trade is more focused on a specific career where academic is just more broad. So that's yeah. one of the yeah. differences that I see. I definitely think that um, the difference in, in um, between academic and, and vocational, the practical application and training for the workforce uh, uh, it's geared to a specific area is is a, a difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have much to compare it to because I've only been teaching for three years and I've never taught <laughs> in, in a school system, so. No, but you went through a school system. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Like we all did. So, mm -hmm. you know, what do we remember from schooling and yeah. and and what are we doing now, you know? And if we go to the next slide, you can see both of them develop skills, but there is actually a, a, a definition to them. So education really is about long-term use and it's associated with broad topics, mm -hmm. mathematics, right? Social studies, right? Like it's so even though the information, the content might be very specific, it's associated with these broad topics. And training really is about immediate use. So sort of the general guideline is it's six months. Within six months, you're going to use this, but that's like a general guideline, okay? It's not always six months. But the, the notion is it, like Nancy said, it, it's about training for a workforce, okay? So training really is associated with work-related skills and job productivity, while education is concerned with human productivity, my ability to be able to be productive over a long term, okay? So, and the reason why I bring this up, that's not for nothing that we're called vocational training and not vocational education, because vocational training, we're focused on yeah. workforce skills. And go to slide number 17. So, it really is about context, okay? So training is learning by doing and situating the skills in a bigger picture. Yeah, Mona, you you don't have to put your hand up, you can just unmute. <laughs> um, I just I just wanted to add because one of the things that I had mentioned, and uh, would you say also it's more like hands-on, the uh, mm -hmm. educational mm -hmm. versus uh, academic where, uh, you actually go into the workforce and you actually practice. You actually do it. It definitely is more hands-on because that's yeah. the nature of a trade, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, like we're seeing trends in education that are really much more hands-on, much more exploratory and much less uh, sage right. on the stage. Let me talk and, and then you guys are going to do some exercises. So we are seeing that switch a little bit in education. It's still not the norm. So it's by definition in vocational learning by doing. Absolutely. Like we are the absolute kings of that because if we're honest, nobody needs to go to vocational schools to learn how to do a trade. That, mm -hmm. That's a new concept, right? Like that's a post-World War II concept. Yeah. Before that, we always learned on in the trade and we can yeah. still do that. DEPs are not mandatory. You can absolutely go get a job working in a CHSLD without the, without the diploma, uh, work for 20 years and be perfectly competent, okay? So you can actually do that. Now maybe CHSLD is a wrong example because there mm -hmm. are governing boards with, the, with, with, with healthcare stuff, but like for the most part, like that's the actual skills don't need to be learned inside public education or inside education institutions, okay? So what is the goal of vocational training? What is this entity? And it's really about us being the experts of the trade and creating the context in which the student can learn because the student doesn't need to be there to learn those skills. They can do that on their own. So why are they coming? Why are they coming to us? Because we can situate those skills in context, okay? And so if we go to slide number 18, you can see that, so, so the skills, so the skills themselves, they don't really change, okay? Or the tasks, I should say more the tasks, they don't change, okay? Cooking food is never going to change. I will always have to take a knife and cut a product and add heat to it to produce something. That is never going to change. But what does change is their influencing factors. And it's these factors that influence how those skills are going to be 
done and what people are expecting for those skills. So, and those factors usually fall into these five categories, right? So there's, there's the materials that I'm using, right? So innovation in foodstuffs means that I don't have the same materials that I'm working with now that we're working with 50 years ago. The tomato mm -hmm. isn't the same, okay? The environment, okay? Kitchens change. The manpower, the skill level of the people inside kitchens is changing. Um, the methods used change because equipment changes, right? So these are all mm -hmm. things that, that influence those tasks, right? And are gonna influence those skills. And so if you go to, to, to slide number 19, there's also these societal factors that are going to go ahead and influence this as well, which is where, like, if you look at, so there's like the social, the social, the economic, the technological, the digital, the cultural, these are all, there's all factors in there that are going to influence enormously my trade. So cultural factors, if we take a look at, at, at cultural factors, you can go to slide 20, think about trends and how that's affecting expectations in of the skill set in your trade think about the tools so artifacts like the tools that are being used in the trade you know like think about like a, something as simple as a stethoscope <clears throat> how has that changed and what is my skill level associated with that right like sure it's it's a simple tool just like the knife is a simple tool and it's the the, the base of my trade but the materials being used to make it, what's expected of me, how I'm going to have to take care of it. There's the sanitation part that 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 gets influenced, right? Like these are all influences. So if we go to the next one, you can see social influencing factors. Okay, so the fact that we have mass retirement right now and huge immigration movements, well, that's influencing my trade enormously. It's influencing it culturally because now we have a different awareness of foodstuffs that we didn't have 50 years ago. And that influences enormously what I'm gonna have to teach. It's also influencing who are the, the employees? Who are these people? What about government regulation, right? Now there's this idea of like, equity, diversity, and inclusion. There's environment and sustainability. There's worker rights. Like all these influence that skill set. So as young cooks, and just to give an example, as young cooks, it was fully expected. I think healthcare is a little bit like this too. Uh, it's fully expected that, well, no, you're going to work a 12-hour shift because that's what you do. That's expected. Like, you know, and if you can't, well, you're not tough enough. And that was sort of like, that was like, it was looked down upon when you couldn't do a 12 to 18 hour shift because you just weren't tough enough and not cut out for this. And it's like, well, hang on, wait a minute, work a right. You know? <laughs> and so now what we're seeing is we're like, is it normal that people should be able to do 12 to 18 hours without a break? Like, that's not normal. So workers' rights are now influencing enormously uh, the skill sets, right? Uh, you can go to slide 22. So economic factors, all right? So this idea of efficiency system, and this is a big one, I think, in healthcare, where it's like less is more. We want to be able to get more for less money. And there's no question in there about quality of healthcare. Well, sometimes quality of healthcare, it's not about less is more. Sometimes quality, you can't use that metric. But that's this 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 capitalist notion is really influencing the way the trade is being practiced and like you know i i'm picking on healthcare because because i think that that one is that trade is really suffering because of because we have that notion and i think that this mass exodus that we're seeing from healthcare and burnout is is linked to that you know technology go to slide 23 technology okay so technology slide 23 and 24 technology and digital influences i separated these out because we have technology as being like actual devices that are built that 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 change right so in kitchens like it'll be new ovens and 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 this type of thing and there's the computerization of things but then if we look at also at slide 24 then there's the digital influence right then there's the artificial intelligence and the automation so the idea that 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 charting for example microsoft has a whole thing for the health sector to help weed out um uh, or mitigate mistakes in charting and so that's artificial intelligence right there so these are all factors influencing 
those skills. The skills doesn't don't change, but these factors influence it. So let's look at slide 25. So in this, I mean, okay, super cool. That sounds fantastic. So what does the trade person need to be able to do? Like, what do I need to be able to do with AI? <laughs> and what about that student? What about that entry level worker? Like, what do I need to expose them to as far as Microsoft charting in healthcare, right? So let's look at, we're gonna look at an example. So slide 26, here's a basic skill. Here's a task that we always do in cooking. We bake, we bake a food item. And the skill associated with that is bake a food item in an oven to the proper degree of doneness. I don't want it underdone. I don't want it burnt. It's got to be done proper, right? That's the skill. So the tool I'm using is an oven. We go to the next slide. So what's an oven? An oven is, it's a box that heats up. I put the food items in it and I can control the temperature, right? So much more than that. Okay. So these are our lovely ovens at the center. <laughs> Although the aluminum, the aluminum, the aluminum wrap is gone, you'll be happy to know. Oh, is it? Okay. And I use this image because every single restaurant owns this oven. Okay. This is the workhorse of the food world. Okay. The nice thing about these ovens is there's like no moving parts on them. They're super easy to repair. They're indestructible. Okay. Next slide. This is the oven that we all want, okay? <laughs> this is the oven that in the workforce, anything that is not a chef owned restaurant, these are the ovens that they have. And these ovens have been around also for 50 years, yeah. okay? These are not new, okay? They always get upgrades, but these are, now it's still an oven. It's a box that heats up. I still put the food items in it and I could still control the temperature. So what really is the difference? But we all want one of these, right? Yeah. Nancy, like, man, yes, I want one of it's, these. it's on our agenda every year oh because all of our okay. students go out there and they use it on their stage, but they're not prepared to use it. They have to learn on the on the on their stage. Okay, so go to the next slide. So what's different? And in this case, what's different are the economic, technology, and digital factors that have influenced this. Mm -hmm. There no the maintenance on this thing completely outsourced maintenance and training right the student does not need to have this oven in front of them to learn how to use the worker I shouldn't say the student the worker doesn't need to have this oven in front of them to learn how to use it why because it's just an oven I already know how to use an oven but what's the part that I don't know what's that digital interface That's it. so it's the computerization it's the digital skills that I'm missing and it's that link right now. What's the difference between this and, and a regular oven as far as use? Well, it's way more efficient, but it's also way more efficient at making mistakes. There's still the, the worker that has to do the task. I still have to put the food in the oven. And if my foodstuffs are not properly prepared, I'm either going to undercook or overcook much faster than I would have with the regular oven mm -hmm. and much more food, <laughs> okay? So there's an efficiency factor that's good, but there's also an efficiency factor that's bad. But that is, that's still my trade skill. That's still baking. That hasn't changed. What's changed is my understanding of computerization and digitals. So, so it's those skills that that's what I want to develop, right? So if we go to the next slide, so me as the tradesperson, I look at that and I'm like, oh, well, that's baking. That hasn't changed. But what are the new skills? And let me situate those skills. The new skills in this case are being able to interact with a digital interface. That's pretty much it. There might be some smaller skills there about learning how to clean an oven properly so I don't break it because really the employer wants me to be able to use that oven without breaking it because that's a $50,000 oven and they're going to get really mad if I break it. But, you know, other than that, that's what they're expecting. So the skill is still the cooking, but what skill am I situating? And that's my role as the tradesperson. So if we go to the next slide, what am I transmitting to the students? In this case, what would I do with the students? So, and this is where I have to bring up the idea of context. So if we go to the next slide, 32, we're training them for a trade that doesn't exist yet. 
Okay, it's not the trade that we live. It's the trade that they're going to create. So in the context of this oven, should we have these? Um, we absolutely should. Okay, I'm not, I'm not denying that we shouldn't have the tools that we need for the trade. But if I really look at it, what is the skill that that student needs to possess? And that skill is digital literacy, because that oven is actually regulated by an app. And so I can easily download that app and have the student interact with the app so that they are a little bit more prepared when they hit the industry. But really the skill that I need them to develop is digital literacy skills, right? So if training is context, now look at slide 33. So now this is the idea that, okay, if we can extrapolate, stop talking about the oven, and now let's start talking about all these different skills, all these factors that influence, and let's talk about in the trade, how do I stay current? Okay, so we looked at we looked at, at the oven here. How would I know about that? Like as a tradesperson, I'm teaching, I'm inside my school. How do I know about this as a tradesperson? Well, I stay current using the natural systems of my trade. So and those natural systems really do depend on the individual traits. They're not the same. It's not like education, right? Like there's there's uniformity inside education. In education, everybody goes to get their diploma. Then we start teaching. Then we do some conferences. There's a few websites we frequent. Maybe now with like uh, the, the digital skills that have exploded, we now have social media. We now have, have, have other sources. But really, that's sort of the pattern of how we upskill. Trades are very different because trades really depend on the trade. So for example, the natural trade uh, pathways for a cook do not involve conferences. We don't go to conferences that barely exist. I mean, there's a few of them that exist. I'm thinking of the food show, right? The Seattle food show, but it's not really something that's part of our trade, but yet the healthcare sector Oh my God, there's conferences all over the place, right? So it really depends on the trade. And so here, this slide here just has a couple of brainstorm ideas of like, okay, so what are some of the natural pathways? Because when we get to the funding part, we're gonna see it's really set up for education, but there is an aspect that we could go explore for funding to be able to go after trade that really, uh, trade uh, upskilling that really is more congruent with our trade, okay? So for example, um, I'm thinking of like the manufacturing guys, like, man, those guys upskill by doing projects. Like that's all they do is somebody comes to them and says, I have a need. And so they join this manufacturing process and this manufacturing process, they come together and they develop a project and that's how they upskill. So every trade's a little bit different. So uh, so slide 34, we can skip over that one. Those are just different factors that are a little bit more specific, like we were talking about before, but we had the examples because I want to get to the case study. So slide 35 is a case study. So I didn't know who was going to be in here. So what I want to do right now is I kind of want to explore this idea of, okay, what about some of the in some of the aspects that the 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 influences on my trade, they're kind of really current right now. So what I did is I created a chart on 36, uh, on slide number 36. Um, you can choose whichever one you want, but there is one for, for, for food and there is one for health. So if you guys want to do those, what I want to do, and so the explanations on our activity are on slide 37. What I want you to do is look at those four topics and choose one that you want to explore more, okay? Click on that link and take two minutes just to explore the resource. And I want you to take mental notes or written notes as you wish, just quick notes about what aspects of this resource are going to influence the trade tasks, right? are going to influence the trade skills. And then when we come back after two minutes, the three questions we're going to ask ourselves are, what should the experienced tradesperson be able to do? What is the industry expecting that entry level worker to be able to do? And what elements of this topic could be brought into teaching a trade? So we're gonna take two minutes to look at the resource. And then after that, we're gonna share what we have and we're gonna write them on the slides that are coming up. 
okay? If you want to go ahead and write on the slides right away, you're more than welcome to, or you can just take notes, okay? But the next four slides are the, are the, four, um, the four resources, okay? So any questions there? Two minutes? Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Did anybody do robotics? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and uh, secretarial studies. Anybody take a, anybody do that one? No, I didn't think so. Okay. Let's go to Nancy. I can see your writing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did. <laughs> I did sustainability in food. That's something that's uh, very important to me as well. So um, I just started. I just started. Do you want me to to add my my thoughts on the on the the different points no? you uh, yeah but it would be great if you just give us like a 30 second you know what what do you think a tradesperson should be able to do and then what knowledge am i bringing into my teaching about this so, def so def definitely um i feel i feel that they should uh know how to search out suppliers who who are concerned with sustainability uh in the food service so how to um and and have good communication skills uh um, and computer skills. I definitely think, um, um, I guess uh, the the industry expecting, uh, what is the industry expecting the entry level worker to, to do? Have a good understanding of what, of, of, of uh, how our uh, environment affects um, our ingredients. Um, definitely, um, you know, be 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 able to to uh, uh, be comfortable with speaking speaking to suppliers um, and asking them questions. So communication skills. Um, what elements of this topic could be brought into teaching? Uh, uh, definitely exposure during 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 the uh, throughout the, throughout their program, but in particular in particular, you know, um, this this topic in particular was about. Um, seafood and fish so as much as possible during the fish competency during during trade and training during as uh, you know stages to to um this it should definitely be brought into the program all right okay i took the i took the notes while you were talking yeah so that way it's fine <laughs> if you want to add anything go ahead man okay okay cool thanks all right did you do, did we do the healthcare one? Did you do it, Amanda? I don't want to put you on the spot. Did yeah. you do it? Okay. Yeah. I love that one, by the way. That's my favorite. I was like, oh, this thing is so cool. Tell me what you think. It. I love it. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Yeah. Just tell, tell quickly the people in the, because nobody saw it. What is it? So it was a, a, a long-term care facility uh, that houses people uh, with dementia and Alzheimer's and um the process of, of moving these elderly individuals from their home to a special care setting can be very, very upsetting, very overwhelming for them. So what they did was they, they took the standard brown doors of their rooms and they made them, they made replicas of their home front door of their previous home. Wow. Um, amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was like, it was a little bit, uh, <laughs> I, I know uh, I saw that too. It's my it's 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 what I've been doing all of my career is taking is taking care of elderly amongst other things. But um, dementia is such a complex uh, cognitive uh, impairment that it's something simple as them you know walking into their to their room and being greeted by their front door is familiar for them. So the familiar familiarity to them is comforting. Um, yeah, so I'll take some notes, mm -hmm. Amanda. Tell us what you think. So what should the experienced trade person do with this information? And like, what are you going to reinvest into education for your the entry level workers? I just think that 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 allowing the students to become um, empathetic with um, cognitive issues and really understanding that, you know, it's not black and white when it comes to dementia and there's so much to understand um, uh, providing them with the skills. Um, I think we could do better when it comes to providing them with communication skills. Um, I try my best to, to bring in my, my years of experience in my, in my teaching, but, uh, I, I still feel like we could do better with it. Like, um, uh, helping them better understand things like dementia, 
you know, dementia is one of many cognitive issues that we deal with. So it's just, I think that we could, like I said, I think we could do a little better. Um, and showing, showing videos like that in the classroom, I think would also be, would also be uh, interesting for them to be able to see different, different interventions, I guess, different ways to, to accommodate mm -hmm. individuals. Yeah. Yeah. This actually, just so you guys know, this is like, this is called, I'm learning this at, at, at university, this is called a non-training intervention because it solves an issue, but it involves what's called design thinking, where you look at the issue and then you say, okay, how can we solve this problem, right? That, and like, what is the training avenue and what is the non-training avenue? So the training avenue would be like, we need to train the workers better so they recognize dementia better, you know? Like that would be the training avenue. And then these non-training interventions are all these things that we kind of forget about, but then when we see them, we're like, oh my God, that's really smart, <laughs> you know? And like, so go back to Nancy's thing about sustainability. So we can train our cooks exactly that inside, like in an, in an education factor. So whether or not it's in a school or they're in the workforce, or we can also develop a logo that people can apply to have. And if we apply that logo and we do a PSA campaign, then all of a sudden people are now going to be asking for sustainable seafood. And it's not necessarily a training intervention. It's what's called a non-training intervention. So understanding also that, that in the workforce, yes, there's training, there's upskilling, but upskilling is also not just associated with knowledge it's associated with what we call design thinking it's associated with coming up with solutions that are not necessarily training mm -hmm. so that's an interesting one uh okay did uh i just want to check did, did, mona you didn't do one huh? i don't yeah, want to leave well, you out. the secretarial i was looking at that one oh, um, okay and um I, I could see that you know the tools that you need to improve your writing which makes complete sense because in that program i would assume you need to have very strong verbal and written communication skills um, mm -hmm. the professionals are often using like verbal written communications and offices to kind of complete numerous tasks like emailing clients, answering phone calls, greeting guests. Um, and is that, I think it's a great, it's great that they kind of provide that because, you know, it's important to be able to clearly like communicate with others to, uh, be able to like, uh, re relay important messages or correspond between executives and customers and employees and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that, that's the one that, uh, I, I kind of, okay. that at. one's an interesting one actually, because this one is a little bit contentious in the sense that we have to approach it from two sides. So what this one is, is I linked out to Antidot and Antidot is like a, it's assistive software to help you write better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's got like the, just like word has your spell check and your grammar check. It's got that, but it is way more powerful. Okay. It's actually a Quebec company. It's, it's amazing software. It's really, really cool. Okay. So it really uses artificial intelligence and, 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 and whatnot. So the trades person, so somebody working in like the information sciences, I put down secretarial studies, but it's like the accountants that like a lot of people would use this, right? Assistive software in writing is now like 100% normal. Everybody uses it. Every single one of us uses it. It doesn't matter if you're a secretary or an auto mechanic, we're all using the word spell checker. And it's gotten to the point now where I don't even turn the word spell checker on it checks it for me. I know. <laughs> That's the artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the workforce expecting? Well, they're expecting me to use that to produce whatever document I need to produce. They do not care if I do it by hand and write it on a piece of paper and then tap it in and correct it using a dictionary, or if I use chat GPT to write it. They do not care. They want the email written. That's the trade. And the contentious part of this is that's not education, that's training. Mm -hmm. Because the education side is I have to know how to write and read and spell and use proper grammar structure without these assistive tools. Mm -hmm. And so this one's a bit of a contentious one because it's like what education is saying and what the trade is saying is now two different things. And so this creates a, something as simple as this. So that's why I put this one in here. Something yeah. as simple as this creates a situation where when you're in vocational training, you're like, 
this doesn't make any sense. In the workforce, everybody's expecting the student, the entry level worker to be able to use assistive software because I want them to write as many emails as possible in an hour. I want the emails without spelling mistakes. I want them addressed to the people. How you get to that, I do not care, okay? Mm -hmm. But I want you to be able to do that. But yet education says, no, 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 you have to know how to do that on your own. You can't use the assistive software in Gmail or you can't use ChatGPT to write your emails. You see what I mean? So this one is really interesting. So what do I pull into education? What part of that am I bringing in to education or vocational training? Because the workforce is expecting that. And yet, like Amanda said, this is where we have some contention with the exam. They're never going to use that in an exam. They have to be able to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. So problem, right? So that one's an interesting one because now all of a sudden we have incongruency. I don't have a solution to that one, guys. <laughs> could, could, I, could I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. Um, for, it just, it's just, it's, it's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like, a, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's just, it's gone, it's gone gangbuster in the last few years, right? With, 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 uh, with the technology. Um, when was the last time a, a program like secretarial, for example, was, was um, upgraded to reflect this kind of things? Like maybe is, are things outdated? In, well, that's a, that's a good point. And it's a side point. So yes. And the answer to that, Nancy, is yes and no. OK, so the programs are there are elements of the program that's outdated. But if you look at the way programs are written, they're not that outdated. OK, because it'll say something and I'm, I'm just going to make something up right now, OK, because I don't know exactly what it says. But let's say it'll have a unit on um, using uh, uh, uh whatever, uh, communication. It's going to have a unit on uh, written communication, okay? And like I said, I'm making stuff up here because I'm not exactly sure which one, which one it is. Mm -hmm. And inside that written communication, it'll have elements of the competency. And those elements are going to say something along the lines of, you know, uh, do the research, uh, construct the email, write the email, send the email, whatever, right? So there's always an action verb. So writing an email okay i can do that on a piece of paper or i can do that in online it's still writing an email yes so that's where the context comes in that's where me as the tradesperson i'm gonna say okay you know what yeah we're gonna write an e we're gonna we're gonna write something on a piece of paper once so we understand structure but mm -hmm. you know what after that we're doing everything online because that's what the workforce is expecting okay so that part you can still fit in most everything into the program. Mm -hmm. And remember, the program is prescribed. You have to teach the program, but the emphasis you put on the different parts, well, that's entirely up to you as the tradesperson. Mm -hmm. So I know that secretarial has another one that's like, uh, it doesn't have it anymore, I don't think. But they used to have one before the new program came in because there is a new program in secretary or medical secretary. Their program's like right now. It's this year is the new program. They used to have one like on saving. There was a criteria in there on save the, the file. And it's like, who saves? Saving happens automatically now, right? That's all cloud-based AI stuff. So what? That's a criteria on exam, you know? Like, okay, but take exam out of it. So I'm going to teach these students. Yes, that does exist. It existed in the past where it was way more common. Today, you might hit one or two systems where you have to save, you know, so double check your system. But one, like saving is click the button. Everybody done? Okay, good. Let's move on. We're not going to do this anymore. Okay, <laughs> right. So, so the emphasis, that's me as the tradesperson. Where the issue comes in is exams. That's another can of worms. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that, Nancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a giant can of worms. Yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah, it's where the issue comes in is exams because this is where we get the discrepancies. And this is where education takes over from training. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> so there is a lot of interesting work being done in exams uh, to try and mitigate that. That would be a different presentation. Sure. <laughs> Um, okay, and we're running out of time. Oh my God, yeah, I was just gonna say it's gonna close oh. in five minutes. <laughs> I know. I was it's looking like, at the slides. There's so. Yeah. I know there's still a billion slides. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to bust through part two because, like, I I mean, 
I think this is, these are the type of subjects we can talk about a lot. Um, I want to go through part two because that's the funding structure. Because now everybody's like, cool, I want to go get training on AI in my trade, right? How do I go about doing this? Part three is where we would go into vt.proceed.ca and start a discussion thread. I'll leave you do that on your own after, or if you want to come into the session in the afternoon, we have the makerspace in the afternoon, we could do it there too, because that's like an open forum where people can bring up whatever they want and we can discuss and stuff like that. So let's just do uh, part two, okay? So if we go to slide number 43, so the, the, the funding networks. So there is, for us in, in vocational, in the English language sector, we really have two major funding sources, other than outside sources, because there's all sorts of stuff that's related to your trade where you can go get funding sources. But I want to talk about proceed stuff, which is the SEN and the LVEC, all right? So if you go to slide 44, SEN is, it's called the Center for Expertise because there's one center that's designated, but once again, digital influence on everything, it's no longer about a center and it's about a community. Mm -hmm. So let's call it a community of expertise. And what this is at slide 45, this is a group of tradespeople coming together that wants to expand and develop trade related material to better teach their trade. We want to support centers that have new um, uh, new authorizations and new programs. We want to develop communication and collaboration strategies, and we really want to develop closer links to our trade. So, slide 46. There's rules about becoming uh, rules. There's guidelines to be about becoming a SEN. Um, right now, there are 10 SENs, and you can go find them in vt.proceed.ca, okay? So just so you guys know, so both cooking and health have SENs, okay? The SENs are a two-year mandate, and when you apply to be a SEN, you have to outline a vision for, the, for, for, your, for what you want to bring in from your trade into teaching, okay? So what the work... What the network is expecting from their SEN, if we can go look at slide 48, is they want their SEN to adopt a leadership role and they want them to listen to what people have to say and develop some logistical solutions. So the the, the great platform for this is vt.proceed.ca because we are all connected via our trade and we can put a lot of resources in there and we can start all kinds of discussions. So we can share the resource through a discussion thread and get people's opinions. And then from there be like, okay, let's develop some sort of learning activity where we can do this. 58 seconds. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then now LVEC for this, for the, for the trades that aren't SENS and also for the sense, if you want to do an individual stage, let's say you're like, okay, I want to go work at Microsoft. I want to learn about, um, charting stuff and they're willing to take me on as a stage for 10 days, well, you can submit that and proceed will pay for your substitution. So you can go do that. Okay. So there's also you as an individual tradesperson can come up with, with, with projects and LVEC will support that. So you still get your salary and then because you're getting paid from work uh, and the work will 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 pay for a sub if there's a sub because that's the other issue. Okay, and then that's like I'll stop here because it's nine seconds. Thanks so much, guys. I'm so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Back Thank in you, the Robin. main room. Bye. Bye.